Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today I will be doing this very stylized cartoonish sneaker design. Um, it's something you could use in any marketing materials or as a web illustration. And if you enjoy this, please leave a like, it really helps the channel and let me know in the comments if you enjoy small modeling sessions like this for random objects in different styles. If you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more like this in the future, please hit that subscribe and the bell button if you want to get notified when I release something new. And if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender and you want to become a 3D illustrator, go and check out my courses that are carefully designed to teach you beginner and intermediate skills in quickest and most effective way. For example, with the new Ultimate 3D bundle, you can go from simple cubic designs all the way to full character illustration in a matter of weeks. So if you're interested, please go check out the link in the description. Let's jump into empty Blender file and I will just select and press X and delete everything we have here. And let's press Shift A and let's add the plane that's something we'll start with. And now let's press seven on an ampad to a top view, tab in to the edit mode and let's press S then X to scale this on X axis like this. And basically we're now defining the shoe proportions. So something like this should work. And now let's press control R and increase the number of cuts with the mouse wheel. And I want to create three cuts just like that. And now we can shape the shoe a little bit better. So let's select the front two vertices and press S and scale them together like this. Now let's select these in the middle and here in the back. And of course we'll need to shift things around a little bit. So let's press two for edge select, select this edge right here, press G twice and slide it back just like that. And now here as well. So this could work as a basic shoe proportions and here you get to decide if you want to go like a more cartoonish stylized look and leave it symmetrical or if you want to give this more realistic proportion. So for example, you can select these two vertices and push them out like this a little bit. So the shoe is kind of bent inwards a little bit. So that's totally up to you to find this shape. Um, I will just modify it very slightly. Okay, and now press A to select all and extrude. And now we'll need to add more geometry because I want to add subdivision modifier. So let's create some supporting loops. I will go for edge select once again by pressing two, alt click the bottom edge loop. And by holding alt and shift, I will select these other one as well. And now press control B and bevel it and we can increase the number of segments to three and let's create a set of supporting loops like this. And now let's press three for face select and select this top face, control click here to select the whole part. And now we can press I to inset a little bit and extrude. And let's see how this looks with the subdivision modifier on. So go to the modifiers tab and let's add a subdivision surface modifier Okay, so far I really like this. So we can continue building our shoe further. And now let's select these two faces right here and let's extrude them. But here I want to refine the shape a little bit. So let's select these front vertices here and scale them on X axis. So S, X and scale them down. So that it's something similar like here in the back. And now I want to select this edge here and push it a little bit forward. Um, right now we can just select these two faces, press X and delete them. So we create this loop. And if you want to refine this, you can press two for edge select, alt click the loop and make sure you have the loop tools add on activated in the preferences. And now press right click loop tools and circle. Okay. And we can continue our extrusion. So press E then Z and extrude this up a tiny bit. Okay, works fine so far. And now press E then Z and extrude this up a tiny bit. And now we can press E again, but right click to release and just scale it out. Extrude once more, so E then Z. And now we can close this, press I to inset and E to extrude down. Let's look from the side by pressing three on an ampad. Toggle the X-ray so we can see inside the shoe and push it down like this. And now one more extrusion. Okay, this works so far, but again, we'll need some more supporting loops here. So let's press Ctrl R and create a loop up here near the edge and one more here. 
let's put one there as well. So basically you're adding loops where you want this shape to be a little bit sharper and you can increase the levels in the viewport so you better see how the result of the subdivision modifier looks. And now we can add one more loop here. So this division here is a little bit sharper and one more near the top. And now you can play with the shape of the shoe. So you can, for example, bring this up to create this really stylized cartoony look. I really like this so far, so we can tab out, right click and shade this smooth. And additionally, I want to create a circle here, this kind of ankle reinforcement. So let's shift right click to move the cursor there, press shift A and add a circle. And we can go lower on the vertices, so let's set something like 12. Tab in and scale this down and I will press R, Y and 90 to rotate this 90 degrees. And I think I like the size, so let's press E then X to extrude it out. Make it a little bit smaller and press F to fill. Of course, I want to add some division modifier here as well, so we'll need to add some more supporting loops. So let's press Ctrl 2, um, that will add subdivision modifier with two levels of subdivision right away. If you want only one, you can press Ctrl 1. So now tab in and with the circle selected, we can just press Ctrl B to bevel this. So we have some holding edges there and now Alt click the loop there and push it inside the shoe. Here a little bit more. OK, and let's go for face select, select this face inside and press I for inset. So there is a little bit more geometry for the subdivision modifier. Now tap out and shade this smooth. OK, and additionally, of course, you can tap back in, press A to select all and play with the scale and position of this. OK, I really like this so far, so we can press Alt D X to duplicate. R, Y, 180 degrees, enter to confirm and push it inside here as well. So we have it on both sides. OK, and now more interesting part, I'll create the shoelaces here again, very stylized. So shift right click here and let's press shift A and add a circle. I think 12 segments will be just enough. So tab in and just scale this down like this and let's tab out right click convert to and choose curve and let's go to curve settings geometry section and we'll increase the depth of the bevel here and you can additionally hold shift for smaller increments and create something like this this kind of ring and we can go here and set snapping to face and align rotation to target and project individual elements and now we can press g and by holding control, we can snap this on the surface anywhere we want. You know, press S to scale it. And now press Alt D to create a link duplicate. And by holding control, you can move it here. And now again, Alt D and place one there. And we can repeat for the other side. So Alt D then holding control and snapping it on the surface of the shoe. And here as well. Now for the laces, of course, we can right click and shade this smooth. Um, it's a little bit jagged, so you need to decide from how far you want this to render because at this scale, this could work easily, but at a closer scale, you will need to add some subdivision. So let's do that right now. I will press Ctrl 1 to add subdivision here. And now I will just select all of these with the original one as last. And now just copy to select it. And now right click here to place the cursor inside. I will press Shift A and I will need to create a single vertex here. If you have the extra objects add on active in the preferences, you will have this single vert option here. You can use that. If not, and you don't want to activate it, you can easily just use a plane, then tab in, press M and merge at center. And that will create one vertex here in the center if you switch to the vertex select, you can see it right here. So whatever works for you. And now let's press E and extrude it in the top view like this. And now let's do a few more extrusions like that. Just three segments should be enough. And now return back to the other loop. And I think this looks fine. So we can select this vertex right here, press shift D and by holding control, 
you can snap it there. Let's look from the front for a change. Extrude this up and again we'll go like this. Hitting E every time and returning back to the loop. And now we can hold control to snap it there and maybe position this a little bit better. You can use G twice to slide it. And the last one, so select this vertex right here, press Shift D. By holding control we can snap it here. Let's look from the front and press E and extrude it like this. Okay, this should work for shoelaces. And now we can tab out, right click and convert to curve again. Let's go to the geometry section in the curve settings and adjust the bevel. And of course we can add subdivision. So let's press Ctrl 1 to add one level of subdivisions. And you can reduce the resolution here because you can see here it got a little bit dense. So you can reduce the geometry right there and then add more um, within the subdivision modifier. So I went all the way to 1 and now I can press Ctrl 2 to make this really smooth, right click and shade smooth. And now we can select everything, shift click the shoe, press Ctrl P and set parent to object. And now we can select the shoe, shift right bracket to select everything and Alt D X to move it to the side. And now let's just select the shoe again, press S then X and minus one, that will flip it to the other side. So we have a mirror image of the shoe and now you can just press R and Z to rotate it in place and position it a little bit better. We can place it here in the middle of a scene. So we can have a simple composition like this. And now I will reset the cursor to world origin by holding Shift S and now let's press Shift A at the plane, tab in and scale it up. That will serve as our background. And now I will go to my add-ons and in the isocam add-on, you can find the link in the description, download it and install. I will just create true isocam. And this is just to make positioning of camera easier for me. I really like to use it, even though I'm going to switch to perspective right now. So let me just do that right here. Press G and Z twice to move this closer and position the camera a little bit better. And now let's go to the output settings and set something like four to three ratio I use this resolution a lot for my dribble shots and now bring it closer. So we have a little composition like this. We can rotate the shoe a little bit in place. Okay, now let's switch to material preview by holding Z. And now we can go to the render settings, enable ambient occlusion that will create these nice cavities and shadows, enable screen space reflections and bloom here. That's just for the purpose of a better preview quality. And now let's switch to the cycles and I will set up some quick render settings. I will render with GPU. If you do too, I'll make sure you have this enabled in the preferences as well. And now I will ramp up the samples to something like 512 and enable denoising. I use optics GPU denoising for viewport and open image denoise for the final render. Um, and I will, since I'm rendering on GPU, I will, I will increase the tiling. Okay, that's for the quick settings. Now you can limit the preview by pressing Ctrl B and drag in a rectangle here. And let's add some materials. So first I will select the background and add a new material. And I want to give this a bit of bluish violet color like this. And let's make the shoes like green and blue something like that something really vibrant and now we need to pick some color that will contrast with the scheme and i think yellow or orange color should work just fine here something like that and for the shoelaces as well and let's add some more materials here so i will go to the edit mode alt click the loop right here and press ctrl plus a few times so that i can expand my selection like that create a new material slot and add a white material. And finally, I want to give this some metallic shine. So let's create a new material and increase the metallic value there. Okay, I think this could work as a simple shoe illustration, for example, for an icon or something in your app or website or whatever you have. 
now we can go to a render preview and you can see this is too dark because we don't have any lights in our scene yet so let's switch this to scene lights and scene world and press shift a and let's add a light area light bring this up by pressing g and z and let's ramp up the power to something like 500 maybe that's too much we'll see and now we have some basic lighting but you can see um, the shadows are a little bit too dark so let's go to the world settings and we can increase the brightness of those shadows by filling in the world with some brighter color but we can blend the colors a little bit better too by introducing some some tint some color to it and finally we can go to color management choose some contrast look and play with the exposure as well and i think this light is too strong so let's go for something like 250 okay works fine and additionally if you need you can add some more ambience by adding lights around so let's press shift d to duplicate this light i will hold period to switch to 3d cursor and press r x 45 degrees minus and now just rotate the light in the background by pressing r and z to create some nice reflections and shadows you can too give this some color and play with the style a little bit more make this maybe a little bit larger for softer shadows you know and the rest is trial and error so go ahead and play with those render settings with those lighting settings um, change colors um, strength of this light and remember a lot of times renders have issues by being a little bit too dark so just play with the exposure settings to get something nice and bright so yeah that's it for a quick shoe or a stylized sneaker illustration today i really hope you enjoyed this um, if you did, please leave that like, it really helps me. And again, if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see something like this in the future, please hit that subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.